It's Medicosis Perfectionalis, resuming our lectures on bleeding and coagulation disorders. We have talked about primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. Today, let's talk about high molecular weight kinenogen, which produces bradykinin and activates factor 12 into factor 12a. So, let's get started. As you know, hemostasis is prevention of blood loss, has many steps, vasoconstriction, then temporary plate of plug, also known as primary hemostasis, then coagulation cascade, also known as secondary hemostasis, then fibrinolysis. You injure yourself because you're foolish, vasoconstriction occurs, which is the first step, then temporary plate of plug, this is called primary hemostasis, depending on the type of the trauma. If it's very small, the primary hemostasis is very sufficient. If it's larger, we need something more. The coagulation cascade, also known as secondary hemostasis, to lay down its fibrin meshwork, trapping the red blood cells, then the clot contracts, producing serum. Fibrinolysis occurs to restore blood flow and then regenerate the tissue. First step, vasoconstriction, which is a local myogenic spasm. Remember, there are only two ways to coagulate, but there are several ways to bleed. What are the two ways to coagulate? The intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. Here is our intrinsic coagulation pathway. Who is the hero of coagulation period? Factor 10. It activates prothrombin. In the intrinsic pathway, we have two factors. Two of them comes before 10, 8 and 9, and two of them after 10 in numbers 11 and 12. 11 and 12 happen to be called the contact group. Why contact? Because they are activated with contact with the subendothelial collagen in the basement membrane. Coagulation cascade is best explained from the bottom. Fibrin is the meshwork. Fibrinogen is the precursor to fibrin. Then we have thrombin, present in a precursor in active form called prothrombin. So prothrombin, thrombin, fibrinogen, fibrin, boom, we are done. This is the president, that's why we call it factor 1. This is the vice president that breaks the tie, we call it factor 2. Then we have the prothrombinase complex. We have a committee, a congressional committee of four members, two numbers, and two letters. What are the two numbers? 5 and 10. Which one is more important? Of course 10. What are the two letters? Calcium and phospholipids. Cool. Or the not two letters but two words. Fine. We have the extrinsic pathway which is faster such as the house of representative. They are young folks that they don't know what they're talking about. And then there is the more elegant and wiser senate which takes time. It's very slow but more efficient. Extrinsic pathway is activated by the tissue factor. When the tissue factor comes in contact with the blood, it's an evident of trauma. So we have the tissue thromboplastin, which is the same thing as tissue factor, activating the only factor that we have in the extrinsic pathway called factor 7 into the active form of factor 7, which will activate factor 10 into the active form of factor 10. The committee is working, agreeing on the decision of coagulation, prothrombin, thrombin, fibrogen, fibrin, boom, we are done. The intrinsic pathway, on the other hand, is longer, started with factor 12. One of the contact group, Y contact, has to come in contact with the subendothelial collagen in the basement membrane of the blood vessel, which means there is a trauma, of course, when it comes in contact. Now 12 is active, 11 is active, skip 10 because 10 is the most important here in the common pathway. Then we have 9 and we have 8. Remember, von Willebrand factor is part of factor A. Von Willebrand factor, or as Germans say, von Willebrand factor, is part of the coagulation cascade and part of the primary hemostasis, because if you remember, platelets need something to adhere to. This something is called the von Willebrand factor. We have missed something, the fibrin stabilizing factor. We're done with here, the biggest number was 12. Let's call it number 13. Factor 13 stabilizes the fibrin into more stable fibrin by cross-linking the fibrin fibers. If you can see and you have a good visual acuity, you can see that calcium is involved in many steps. That's why calcium coagulation. 
quick comparison between the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic means we need something intrinsic to the blood, something from within, hashtag self-sufficient. What's this something from within? Our famous blood vessel wall, also known as subendothelial collagen. The extrinsic pathway needs something from outside, called tissue. So the tissue factor, also known as tissue thromboplastin, also known as tissue phospholipid. Intrinsic pathway has more steps, a longer cascade. If it's a longer cascade, it's more sufficient. It gains gravity and momentum as it goes downwards. It starts with factor 12. The extrinsic factor is shorter and starts. Uh, it only has factor 7. Faster but less efficient. What activates this intrinsic factor is what? Is the subendothelial collagen. What else, dear? The platelets. What part of the platelet? The platelet factor 3. What else? The great high molecular weight kinogen, which is the topic of today's video. Cool. Factors here are only 7. Factors here are 12, 11. Skip 10 because 10 is the most important guy. 9 and 8. Cool. PT measures the extrinsic pathway and the common was What is PT? Prothrombin time. PTT measures the intrinsic and the common pathway. What the flip is PTT? Partial thromboplastin time. So here is your famous intrinsic pathway. 12, 11, skip 10, 9, 8, activate factor 10, boom. The intrinsic pathway is also known as the contact activation pathway because it starts with the contact group. They have to come in contact with the basement membrane, specifically the subendothelial collagen. That's why we call them the contact group. What else stimulates them? The platelet factor 3 and the great high molecular weight kinenogen. High molecular weight kinenogen activates factor 12 into 12A and 11 into 11A. Thank you so much. Also, we have plasma calicrin. Calicrin activates only factor 12. Cool. High molecular weight kinenogen, thanks to calicrin, is converted into bradykinin, the great pro-inflammatory guy that will have many functions, such as vasodilation. Also, pain. This is not the end of the video yet, but I have 50 hematology cases on my Patreon website. You can't miss those. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, enjoy these cases, and I guarantee you, you will never answer all of them correctly. Take it to the freaking bank. Factor 12 into 12A, 11 into 11A, then we complete the intrinsic coagulation cascade. High molecular weight kinesin is converted into bradykinin thanks to plasma calicrin. Plasma calicrin activates factor 12, which returns the favor by activating pre calicrin which is a precursor form of calicrin. So this is one of the few examples of positive feedback loops in your body. Because most of what you have in your body is the negative feedback. Positive feedback is kind of uncommon, but this is a classic example of it. Calicrin activates factor 12. Factor 12 activates pre calicrin which is going to be converted into calicrin in a positive feedback loop. Excellent. What else? High molecular weight kinesin will activate both factor 12 and factor 11. pre calicrin is converted into calicrin causing high molecular weight kinesin to be converted into bradykinin. High molecular weight kinenogen. Is it active? Yeah, it activates factor 12. It produces bradykinin. If it's active, it's protein, period. Take it to the freaking bank. It's plasma protein. What kind of plasma protein? It's globulin. Is it alpha, beta, or gamma globulin? It's alpha globulin. Not to be confused with the coagulation factors, which are beta globulins. Not to be confused with your immunoglobulins, also known as antibodies, which are gamma globulins. This high molecular weight kinesin, which is inactive, is activated when it comes with contact with the basement membrane the subendothelial collagen. It produces bradykinin, which is one of the kinins. IN means protein and kine from kinetic means to set in motion. High molecular weight, sorry, low molecular weight kinesin is in the tissue. High molecular weight kinesin is in the plasma. Huge difference. High molecular weight, plasma, low, low molecular weight in the tissue. What the flip does bradykinin do with its life? 
It contracts the non-vascular smooth muscles, such as the bronchi, causing bronchoconstriction. That's why you end up with dry cough. Why not productive? I'm just constricting the bronchioles. I'm not secreting mucine, so it's not productive cough, it's just dry cough. Increase vessel permeability, and this increase of vessel permeability will lead to some, something called angioedema, which is a medical emergency. Angio means vessel, edema means edema, like accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. Cool, what else? Pain, acute pain, like when you hit your little toe in the sofa, no, chronic pain, due to chronic inflammation. I'm increasing vessel permeability. I'm all about inflammation. Vasodilation will lead to hypotension. Also, natriuresis will lead to hypotension. So, bradykinin leads to pain, hypotension, dry cough, etc. Let me answer the question from the previous video. I've told you that blood coagulates in vitro via the intrinsic pathway. But how come coagulate using the intrinsic pathway when there is no subendothelial collagen in the freaking test tube outside of your body or in vitro? Yes, it's true that I don't have subendothelial collagen in the test tube. However, I still have high molecular weight kinogen. I still have the glorious plasma calicrin, and I have the platelet factor 3 and the wettable surface of the glass, which has a negative charge. All of these can activate factor 12 into 12A. Let me start the intrinsic pathway, please, and coagulate your blood. That's why we call the intrinsic pathway contact activation pathway, because it comes in contact with the subendothelial collagen in vivo or the wettable surface of the glass in vitro. Clinical take-home point. Deficiency of high molecular weight kinetogen is not clinically significant. It does not cause bleeding. Also, deficiency of pre does not cause bleeding. It's not clinically significant. Do you know why? Let me know the answer in the comment. If you can get the answer, you are really brilliant and you understood this video and my work is done. In the next video, we'll talk about the calicrin kinin system and why you get dry cough and angioedema when you take ACE inhibitors such as any drug that ends in prel, enalaprel, lisinoprel, what the flip prel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Get all of my notes and the 50 hematology cases and counting by going to Patreon and I'll give you my bloody Dropbox link. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense, as long as you go to Patreon.